So in this video, we're going to work with a Notion style VisiVeek editor called Novel, which is AI powered for auto completion. You can add AI to it if you want. It's built on top of TipTap, which is a VisiVeek editor uh, under the hood, and also Vercel AI SDK, which makes calling to OpenAI for chat completions easier. But really, what, what I want to create from this is a simple Next.js website where we're going to write blog posts with a title. For example, we can say partial pre-rendering. And then here we can start typing our content. You can get the slash to get command. So this is a normal paragraph. We can also have headings. This is a heading. You can have list items so you can go list if you have worked with notion it's just pretty much uh, very similar to what you get out of notion and we're going to build this together not only to write this content but to also use server actions and neon as our backend database to create a post once we create this post it's going to redirect us to this blog post we can see the title and the content that we've provided, and this is already styled using Tailwind typography package. So let's dive right in. Let's just start by talking about Novel. There is a link in the description if you want to get to this website and also to the Git repository. This is an open source project that we're going to use. In this open source project, there's two examples. I've used this simple Novel Tailwind example here. And basically on the left, you can see I have a next chat CN project. There's a link in the description and a video on the channel where I walk through how to set Next.js up with chat CN. Now to bring in the editor, let me just from a high level show you what we have. So in the layout, uh, we're pretty much the same as the starting point on our next chat CN template. I just added this Sonar toaster from ShatCN, which is for toast notifications when things go wrong. And inside of our homepage, what we're trying to do is to create this content form. So let's dive into the content form and see what's happening here from a high level. Again, we are rendering a bunch of inputs down here for the title and this log. And I'm also bringing this editor, which is where the user would create the content. This is the VisiVeek editor. We're going to look at this in a second and a button to then call handle click. The handle click is going to in turn call this server action and create this block. But before we dive into the server action and what's happening here, let's just look at the editor and then we're going to come back to that form. Now for the editor from a high level, you have this editor root and the content exported from this package called novel when you install it there's a bunch of selectors and extensions that you can pass in to your uh, editor content such as the extensions that i have here and then also for the commands and for the slash command you have a listed um, suggestions for your items and also the editor bubble that pops up when you select the text. So if I go back to the page, if I select this text, you see this editor bubbles up. You can make the text bold, you can make it italic and whatnot. Uh, so definitely go through the documentation for novel. There's a link to the documentation as well. Let me just make this a smaller, where it walks you through the installation and through this different hierarchy of uh, the components that are exported from the package and how you would go about designing them together. There's also um, this example, quick start from for Tailwind specifically. So if you wanted to use it with Tailwind the way that I'm using it here, you can also use this um, as your guide. And again, the example in the GitHub is also a good resource to get some inspiration. So I basically copied um, what I have found in this example. So under the source, you can find in the components, there's this editor um, directory. 
which it contains the advanced editor, the extensions, the slash commands and selectors that you can use in your app. And that's what exactly uh, I've done here. So in, under the components, I have the same components that you can find there. You can add more components and more functionalities to it. The example that I have here doesn't have the AI generation tool. There is another example on the repo. So if you go to the apps, this is a mono repo built on top of Turbo repo. So there's the docs and there's the web. Under the web, there's also, this is a more extensive application. And this is the same thing that you see in the beginning in the demo, where it has syntax highlighting, it auto saves, and it also has AI generation where if you just go in here and hit command, uh, hit slash, you can come down here, or maybe they have removed it from here because it's costing them money. So you can have you can have an endpoint here for the generate. It it is in the documentation um, for you to be able to actually use what I've, what you have already written as a prompt for it to auto generate the rest of the article you're trying to write. So once you've copied all these components that require to have this Visivik editor, we're going to end up with this editor. So I have exported this from the editor that I created. This is in, in turn reading all the extensions and selectors from the novel package, and we're importing it here. Now I'm passing an onChange and initial value to it. The initial value just says that text to say type slash or just to start writing. The same thing that you saw in the beginning. So this is what we are passing in as our initial value. And then on change, um, I'm just passing it to this set content, which is a local state I'm holding. So any time that the user changes the text or whatever it is that's here, it is going to save it in this local state. Now, just quickly inside the editor, we have this on change passed into the on update property of our editor content. So we get the instance of our editor and on the editor, you have two options. You can get the HTML. So it turns this into an HTML, which I'm using. You can also get it as a JSON um, format, uh, which is something similar to this format where you have your content as an array of different types of objects. I'm getting the HTML and the reason why is that I want to use that HTML to then save this to the database and then later on render it on the individual blog post page. So going back to our editor, now just to talk about how the server action is working, we have the title hooked up to this input, we have the slug hooked up to this input, we had the editor down there hold in this state. Now for this luck, I'm auto generating this luck. So anytime that you would put in a name, it automatically generates this luck. It removes the spaces and, and anything other than alphanumeric characters and the uh, leading and uh, ending slash uh, uh, dashes if there is any. Um, you can go in and update this yourself, but to make it easier, we are automatically generating this luck. And then once you click on the create, um, you have to validate the data. I have a skip to validating the data here. You already know how to do that. If you don't, there are videos on the channel. I'm going to link it in the description where we use React Hook Forms and Zod for validation. So you can validate the data that you're passing into your server actions. You can also validate it on the back end before saving it to the database. Assuming that you're validating the data, I then call this create blog action, which is a server action, and I would pass in my title, slug, and content. So let's go into this create blog action. Again, inside of my lib, I've created this actions folder where I'm going to export this function that is going to then create this blog post. Now for actions, if you want to include them in, all, in one file, you can use this directive up top that is going to mark all of these functions as server actions. And down here, again, we validate the data. I haven't here, so you make sure that you do it. And I'm using Prisma to connect to my Neon database to create a post. Now to set up Prisma, there is a video on the channel, again, link in the description. 
We also have an extensive video on Neon Database, which is a serverless Postgres, super easy to create and spin up a, uh, a Postgres database. So you set up Prisma by installing the Prisma package, running the Prisma in it. This in turn is going to create this schema.prisma. We are using Postgres and you have to copy your database URL. So inside of Neon, if you create a new project, I've created this project going back to my projects. I've created this novel project and you get your connection string. Once you create a project, you can click on this pulled connection to use a connection pulling service automatically from Neon so that you don't run out of connections. You copy this string, you bring it over to your .env and set it to database URL. This is what Prisma is going to now use to connect to your database. I just have one model, which is a post, has a title, slug, content, and two automatic fields, created at and updated at. So that's my Prisma. On top of this, you need to create your Prisma client. So instead of our lib, we have the Prisma client from a high level. This is to avoid uh, recreating the Prisma client, client on hot module loads in local development. So if we are in local development, we are holding a reference to our Prisma in the global disk object. Um, just the best practices for creating a Prisma client in an XJS application. And that's um, all there is to it. So going back to our server action, we now have our Prisma client. There's a post model or table on it. We're going to go create, pass in the data, and this is going to create a blog post. Now, simple error handling here, if there is no posts, if the user is trying to create a post with the same slug that already exists before, you can look into the error.code uh, P2002 from Prisma. Uh, it is for a unique value constraint in our model. The only constraint is, or the only unique value is, other than the ID, which is automatically created, is the slug. So therefore... Uh, if this is the error, you can also check to see if it is for that specific model and has that specific uh, property of a slug on it. But pretty much in my model, because I know that's the only unique field, I would say this ar slug already exists. And if everything goes through and successful, I'm going to redirect to blog and then uh, that specific post.slug, which is going to take me to that specific post. If I go back to posts, I have another page that renders all of the created posts. So we can just go into the individual posts. Um, again, for that, from a high level, we have created this blog. There is a page. This is for all of the blog posts where I'm using Prisma to find many. I'm ordering by the created at date. And then I'm just rendering them down in this list with a link that goes to that individual post. And then on the individual post slug, I'm using a dynamic route. This is accessing the params object that's sent from Next.js to our uh, page component. I am expecting a slug, a dynamic slug, because I named this dynamic inside of my uh, component. I'm using that slug to then call Prisma post find unique to find a post where the slug is this params.slug find unique because I've set the slug to be a unique value inside of my table. And then I'm just rendering the content of my blog post here, namely the title. And then for the HTML that I got out of the novel VZVIC editor, I now have an HTML string, which I'm going to pass into this dangerously set inner HTML. Again, make sure that you're sanitizing the text coming in from your front end, saving to your database, and then setting it as the inner HTML here. I cannot emphasize this enough. I just skipped those because we have videos on the channel where it goes through form validation and sanitization. So have that in mind. Now, the only last piece here is that once you set the inner HTML, you can pass in this pros class from Tailwind. If you go to your Tailwind documentation, just make this a smaller, so in the docs, if you search for typography, there is this plugin that you can install, Tailwind Typography, 
and use it inside your Telvin config. I'll show that in a second, but this is going to allow you to pass in this pros class, which in turn is going to just style any raw HTML that you are fetching from your CMS or from your database in this instance, and that's exactly what we are doing. So going back, let me just quickly also show you my Telvin config. So we have installed this package called Telvin Typography, which is going to enable that pros class. We also have this Tailwind CSS animate. This is coming from the novel example for the type of animations that they have defined here. So the only key thing here to actually style your posts correctly to install the Tailwind typography package. So therefore you would have a nicely styled blog post over here. And that's a wrap for this video, folks. This is the easiest way to implement a Visivik editor in your Next.js apps. Now, obviously, if you want to write content yourself as a developer, you can use Markdown, you can use MDX, and it's, it's going to give you the same type of functionality. But when it comes to end users that may not be comfortable with writing Markdown and MDX, a Visivik editor or simple to use editor like this, a Notion style editor that makes it easy for them to select uh, different styles of texts, headings. You can also upload images here, something that I didn't mention, but you have to then have a storage for your images, such as Vercel Blob, which is the example that they have used in the code, so you can look at the code there, or use any other uh, storage service for that matter. You can have the AI generation to help them generate the blog post that they're trying to create and easily implement this in your blog websites or any other type of websites that's user facing and makes it easier for the users to generate content. If you have any questions, like always, hit me down in the comments and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.